Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel again. A few days ago I released a video about installing Arch Linux with the BadRefs file system and Snapper. And in today's video I'm going to have a quick overview of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, the rolling release of OpenSUSE based on BadRefs and Snapper, which was by the way developed by an OpenSUSE developer. So let's have a look at it. So here we go, we are now on a GNOME desktop. Let's have a look at the OpenSUSE website and you'll just go to opensuse.org and you'll be presented here with a choice. We have two versions of Linux we can download here. We have the lib version, which is the standard version or better said the point version. And we have Tumbleweed, which is OpenSUSE rolling release. And this is what we are going to install today. So let's click on Tumbleweed here and let's click on install Tumbleweed. And we have two options here, depending on your architecture, you can select the DVD image, which is around four gigabytes and the network image, which is 138 megabytes, which is considerably smaller. So if you have an internet connection already and you want to install from the internet, definitely go for the network image as it's a smaller download. But if you want to make sure that you have already all packages and your internet connection might not work with a live CD, then go for the DVD image as it contains all drivers needed. So let's download the network image and put it in the USB stick here and boot the machine from there. And I'll meet you back in a second. So we booted up now the machine from the ISO and we are presented now with the installation menu. So I'll just hit enter here on installation. It's going to take a moment to boot up the installer. And there you go. We are now in the installer here. It's not full screen, but let's not worry about this. We'll do it once the system is installed. And right now it's adding the repository and getting ready to start the installation. And there you go. This is the welcome screen. So we can look through the license agreement here, but I'd rather not do this now. And I'll just select my keyboard layout here. So I'll select German Switzerland as I'm in Switzerland right now and then click next. So now YAST2, which is the administrator tool for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, is asking if I want to activate additional repositories and I'll say yes. And there you go. I'll accept the three defaults here and click next. It's going to take a second to add the repositories here. Now we are asked for the system role. So basically what kind of system we want to install. So by default, normally OpenSUSE comes with the KDE Plasma, but we can choose here also to install GNOME, XFCE, a generic desktop, a server or a transactional server. Well, in this case, I'll just keep it plain and simple and I go with the KDE Plasma and then click next. So here is the suggested partitioning that the installing is proposing us. So it's basically creating a GPT label and creating an EFI partition with a FAT file system. It's creating a main BadRefs partition here and a two gigabyte swap. And if we click on see details here, we see also that the system is creating 10 different sub volumes, which are going to be used for snapshotting. And we'll see this in a second when we will reboot the installation. So I'll accept the defaults here and click next. And now we are asked to select the time zone. So I'll go to the region here and select Europe and I'll select Switzerland from the list as I'm in Switzerland right now and just click next. Now I can create a new user. So I'll fill up here with my name and it's fine with the username and I'll select my password and retype it. And then I want to use this password for the root user. So I let the first option checked here, but I want to remove automatic login as I want to put the password when I log into the system and then I click next. So here we have now the installation settings and we can review basically here what's going to be installed. For example, secure boot is enabled by default here. We can disable it if you want to. We have as a default system, the target is graphical mode. That means we will boot into the graphical environment. We could change this by clicking the link and selecting just text mode to boot in the console. We have also the system menu here where we can see all the hardware in the system. And we can also change some configurations here for SSH and firewall and also the configuration for network manager. But everything looks okay to me here. So I'll just click install and we need to confirm the installation here. So I'll click install again. And so it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. So the system is installed and we can reboot now. So I'll click OK here. And I'm greeted here by the bootloader. So I'll just select the first option here to start up the system. It's going to take a second to log in. And I can see here the splash screen from Tumbleweed. This is very nice, very nice looking. 
and I can log in with my password here. And we are on the KDE desktop. So the first thing, let me adjust the screen resolution here. So I'll go to the system settings and to display and monitor. And I'll select my resolution here and bump the scale to two and click apply. And I'll probably have to log out and log in again for the changes to take effect. So let me do that very quickly. And there you go. So I'll click log out here and enter my password again. And now we are in KDE with the full resolution. So let me close up this window here. And I'll increase the size of the panel here as I need it a little larger. There you go. So this is a standard KDE desktop. And let's have a look at the info tab here. And as you can see, we are on KDE Plasma version 5.18.4. And the kernel version is 5.6.2.1. This is the latest kernel, the 5.6 kernel, which was released a few weeks ago. So let's close this up here. And from a user standpoint, Tumbleweed is a fairly classical distro where you have a wide selection of software already installed. So let's have a look, for example, here at the internet software. We have Firefox, for example. We have the standard set of KDE apps, for example, for mail, calendar, and contacts. And let's go back here to all application and go to the office tab. And we have also LibreOffice already installed here. So let's open up LibreOffice Writer to see the version. And let's close this up here and go to help and about LibreOffice. And we have version 6422, which is the latest version. So that's perfect. Let's close this up here and close the window. So on Tumbleweed, you have several ways on how you can update packages. And one is, of course, through the Discover Software Center, which is available always in KDE. So you can open it up and go to Fetching Updates here, and you could update your packages from here. I'll close this up. We have also the possibility to upgrade packages from the terminal. So let me open up a terminal here, go full screen, and increase the font sizes. So we could type in sudo, zipper, and then dup for distro upgrade, and hit enter enter our root password here and we could install also from here now there is nothing to do the packages are up to date so we can close this up but the real power of tumbleweed lies in a tool called yast and this is really an administrator tool for the whole system so let's type in yast here and then select the first option we need to enter the root password here and this is the yast control center so i'll go full screen here so that you can see better and we have a wide range of options we can configure here from online updates, from software managers, software repositories, and so on. We can, of course, configure also the system keyboard layout, printers, scanners, sounds. But then we go also into more in-depth settings, like, for example, the bootloader. So if we click on the bootloader here, we'll see we can change, actually, the boot code options directly from this list here. We can also change the kernel parameters from here and also the bootloader options. So, for example, I see here OS Prober is already installed. It's going to be probing for other OSs on the disk. And we can define also here the timeout in seconds before Grub boots up. And let's close this up. We have also other tools here available, like, for example, the kernel settings. We can also see the services manager. This is going to configure the systemd services. So if we click here, for example, we can see now the default system target is the graphical interface so that we can boot up in KDE. But we could change this from here to another level if we needed to. So let's close this up. Then we can also configure other things, like, for example, a mail server, if we wanted to. We could also configure our host name. We could also configure our hypervisor and tools. For example, if we click here on virtualization, we can install one of these virtualization options. If, for example, we would install KVM, we could check this box here, KVM server and the tools, and click Accept. And the YAS tool is going to download the necessary packages here to have this virtualization solution installed. And it's going to take a moment to download and install it. And there you go. So we can click OK now. And when we go back to our applications here, we can start up Virtual Machine Manager here. And we can go ahead and configure our VMs directly from here. So let's enter our root password. And we could start configuring our machines directly from here. So let's close this up. We can also here configure our firewall, for example, and we have also user management directly here. But as we have seen during the installation, we installed this system using the ButterFS file system. That means the ability to take snapshots. And this is what we can control here with the file system snapshot option we have down here. So if we click this option here, we see here all the snapshots the machine took since we installed the system. So we see here, for example, a snapshot that was taken when we installed the virtualization software. So let's click on this one and then select Show Changes. 
And we can see here a list of changes that were done to the system. So for example, if we expand the boot option here, we can see what was changed and we can show here the difference between first and second snapshot, for example. And if there is a problem with the system after the installation, we could choose, for example, to restore from first or second, depending on what we need. And this is really the beauty of snapshots. And this option is very well, of course, incorporated in Tumbleweed, as Snapper was developed actually from an uh, OpenSUSE developer. So let's cancel out of this and close the window here. And let's close out of Yast here. And let's go again back to the program menu here and select applications. And let's go to system here. And here we can see we have several other applications that are useful for an administrator, for example, a terminal for the super user mode here. And as we've seen before, we have also our Yast tool down here. So this was a look at Tumbleweed. It's a very solid distribution and its main feature is of course the ButterFL SPI system, which allows us to take snapshots and restore from snapshots when there is a problem in the system. My experience with Tumbleweed was very good, but of course, as everything else in Linux, it's always a matter of personal preference, but I definitely suggest you try it out and see if it's something for you. There you go, this was a quick overview of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. In my experience, it's a very solid distribution, but of course, it's always a matter of personal preference. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, please hit the like button below and sub to the channel if you haven't already, sub really helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, please visit our Patreon website. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.